Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Games Blog Saturday review. Guess what? I asked, but there was no reply. The other player just looked at me suspiciously. Guess what? I asked, this time with more feeling. Yet there was still no reply. The other player tilted their head and squinted at me. Guess what? I tried for the third time. The other player started to open their mouth, but then thought better of it. It was going to be harder than I thought. The other player clearly knew what to do so they don't get got by Big Potato Games. I know that many of you probably wouldn't classify Don't Get Got as a board game. It's technically not even a tabletop game because it doesn't require a table or other surface to play. Yet it's listed on Board Game Geek so I would argue it qualifies as a board game. And even if it wasn't listed I would still review it on my blog. So with that out of the way let's delve right in. As the name suggests Don't Get Got is a game where you're trying to trick your friends into doing something and when you succeed you've completed your mission. Complete three missions and you win. These missions cover a wide range of things, from the relatively benign to the rather more ludicrous. The basic mission that everyone gets is to ask a player, guess what? And if they answer with, what, you're successful. Other missions require you to be a bit more clever, but I don't really want to spoil any of them for you. Suffice it to say that the game comes with dozens upon dozens of mission cards, so you can easily play the game with dozens of people all at the same time, and you could play it several times and still not run out of missions. The options are vast. You can play it at home or while you're out and about. Everyone just needs their wallet of missions, which easily fits into your back pocket, and off you go. You can either play until someone has successfully finished three of the five missions, or until a certain deadline, or a combination of both. You can play it once or multiple times. It's not an ideal game to play while you're on holiday, or at a convention, or over a weekend, or just for a single day. The thing is, you think it's going to be easy, but it's not. Of course, you keep your five missions a secret, except one of them which everyone has in their repertoire, but even so, you'll find it hard to get someone. When we played it, everyone was immediately on edge. None of us wanted to answer any else's questions, or do what someone else asked you to do. Trying to get someone to help you with something, which is a genuine request, and not an attempt to complete a mission, was virtually impossible. Nobody trusted anyone else. It was a strange feeling. The game allows you to call someone out if you suspect them of trying to complete one of their missions. If you're correct, they have to be honest and show you their mission and it's considered a failure and cannot be attempted again. However, that meant I ended up calling out my daughter every time she asked me something. Rather than not saying anything, I was constantly saying, you're trying to trick me, it's one of your missions. It was becoming silly. Yet my daughter still managed to finish three missions. After all, eventually forget about the game and that's the time to pounce. And it's that timing that makes this game so much fun. At first you think that the game is going to be boring because people will either not talk or just continuously call each other out. However, the reality is that you do relax into it and eventually forget that you're still playing. If you time it right, you will get the other person in the end, especially if you play other over several days. The classic moment was first thing in the morning when my daughter seemed to have just woken up, but managed to get my wife and complete a third mission and win the game. We didn't expect her to be playing so early, but she was spot on and exploring to the moment. It's those moments that don't get got creates that you will remember. That's exactly what many of us like about playing games, the moments you remember. It's what makes this game so much fun as well as the psychology behind it all. How everyone becomes cagey and changes their behaviour. It's a really interesting and fun game that I highly recommend you try out for yourself. It's a game you can play with friends and family alike. Thank you for listening to this Tabletop Games Blog Saturday Review Podcast. Please check the description below for links mentioned in this episode as well as to the written version of this article on the blog. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us some stars or leave a review. Please also tell your friends about me and if you want to offer financial support, check out my Patreon Ko-fi pages, links to which you'll find in the blog at tabletopgamesblog.com. So thank you again for listening and I hope to see you again soon. This podcast was made possible by the generous help of my Patreon supporters. Royal Patron, Sean Newman. Castle Guard, David Miller. Dice Masters, Alex Bardi, Paul Grogan and James Naylor. And Shining Lights, Robin Kay, Sarah Reed, Tim Vernick and Winnet Wizards.